everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, first webinar of our series, um, uh, The Aesthetics Code. On uh, behalf of uh, Bioscience, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all here today. Uh, you're extremely numerous, and I uh, thank you all, uh, first of all, for that. Uh, we are very, very happy to share with you this first episode of a long series of webinars that we're gathering under the name of uh, the Aesthetics Code. Um, during these uh, difficult times, we'll try to continue sharing with you all our knowledge and uh, all our passion for uh, for our uh, for our brands, our products, and our sector uh, with you, and we'll try to have a, a good time uh, despite the, the circumstances. I will leave the floor very soon to Massimiliano Brambilla, who will speak about um, H uh, about urinary uh, acid for uh, for body contouring today. At the end of the presentation. We'll allow you to ask uh, writing questions into the letter box. You'll find on the right side of your screen. Uh, we, you, ha you don't have uh, you don't have yet uh, access to this message box. It's normal because it's going to be open after the doctor's presentation. Also, we'll try to to ask to answer uh, all your questions. We may not, uh, we may not have enough time for it, so uh, we'll collect all the pending questions and we'll send you a video with the doctor answers uh, to it as soon as possible. We will also probably keep some questions as presentation topics for future webinars. For those who don't know him, and uh, there are some still, Dr. Brambilla is board certified plastic surgeon. He trained in Italy, uh, in the US, and in Israel. He is a senior surgeon of plastic surgery in charge of plastic surgery in the breast unit and genital surgery at the IRCCS, Fundazione Ospedale Maggioro, Maggiore Policlinico Mangiagalli of Milan. He is also a professor at the University of Milan in Italy, a name in France. He works as a referent of the CIPRE, the Italian Society of Plastic Surgery, for the genital surgery chapter. Uh, Dr. Ronilla is also a board member of many international scientific international uh, committees and societies. He published numerous paper, uh, numerous paper um, chapter of books, and, and we're very proud of it. He's a high member of our uh, Bioscience Scientific Committee. Dr. Bambina, I leave you the floor. It's your turn. Thank you very much to all of you for being here. At the end of the presentation, you'll have uh, plenty of time to ask anything you want to ask about body contouring and uh, negative for body contouring. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, thank you. A lot to you, Matteo. Thanks to everyone of the bioscience and especially a great thank to all the people that uh, are attending. Um, this webinar. I'm talking from Milano, from the belly of the coronavirus in the world right now. Um, my hospital is a hub for corona, so we're fighting every day, but uh, thinking about good things and positive things uh, as beauty is always good for, for the heart. So we try to today to, to, to talk about HA for body contouring, about the bioscience portfolio, uh, with all the products that bioscience have uh, for this kind of uh, this kind of treatment. Um, disclosures. Here we are. So uh, going to the basic, I would like to share with you some basics about uronic acid because sometimes we miss the basis, and if we miss the basis, we don't really know what we are dealing with. We know that HA is a natural component of extracellular matrix and is a gut polymer uh, that has uh, variability in length and molecular weight. And since so many years, uh, there are tries to make replicas of hyaluronic acid or from animals, uh, for example, from cock. And this was stopped many years ago, abandoned because of the number of allergies and problems and this, I think there is still a product that can be found in Korea, but nowadays most of the HAs are, um, are obtained via fermentation of streptococcus. The classification of HA uh, can be done according to the cross-linking. You see here non-cross-linked on the left side and a cross-link on the, on the right side, and there is a huge difference between the two. The cross-linking can be done by physical cross-linking or by chemical cross-linking. Uh, the physical um, cross-linking is quite limiting, um, it, it is quite difficult 
because um, it doesn't give any stability to the HA. It's very difficult to get a good quality HA, durable and uh, stable. So this is the reason why um, through the years have, have been produced many chemicals, cross-linkers, such as DDS, DO, and especially the DDDE that is widely used by all manufacturers. So what happened is that we start from a liquid HA, then there is a cross-linking, and in the two phase, there is uh, the uh, walls, bridges between the, um, between, uh, the blocks of HA are given, in order to have a stable and uh, strong cross-linking. Uh, those are the hydrogen bonds that can be obtained through what we call the three-phase cross-linking that is classic from most of the manufacturers. What Bioscience studied uh, in recent years is this technology that is called SCLT, that is patent, and is a five stages cross-linking in order to give more stable and bigger bridges between the two uh, ironic acid, let's call, blocks. And this leads to a more resistant uh, um, ironic acid because it becomes more resistant to ironic days, so it's longer duration. It's more viscous, so it's more resistant to pressure. And five washings instead of three washings uh, means that we have less BDDE in, in, in comparison with a three-step uh, one. Because one of the problems of BDDE is the, one of the problem of the BDDE is the toxicity. Um, because we don't want to have much BDDE because in huge amounts it cannot be so nice for, for the body. So with this system we avoid this problem. Then according to classification of HA, according to the phases, we have the monophasic HA gels that are single phase HA, and then we have biphasic gels containing cross-linked HA that is suspended within non-cross-linked HA. But more or less is used as a carrier. And you can see here again the hydrogen bands. Monophasics then are divided into monodensified, that means that they have one stage cross-linking, and polydensified, it means that they have two or more stages of cross-linking with the system you have seen before. So we have two different kinds of monophasics. Then again, uh, your only cases can be classified according to concentration and to HA uh, dimension of particles. And each one of them, so HA concentration, HA molecular weight, and cross-linking, all those characteristics, they go under the name of rheology. Rheology is the physical characteristics that influence so much HA when it's subject to the forming forces. It means that all those characteristics make the difference when you inject one product or another product inside the body or in a certain tissue. And the characteristic of rheology um, are viscosity, elasticity, and cohesivity. Elasticity is the capability to recover original shape after the formation. Viscosity, the inability to recover, so it's the opposite. And cohesivity is the strength of cross-linking adhesion forces that hold individual HA. And the three of them, they make really the big difference from one product to, the, to another. That means that if you have the possibility to, in, of choosing many products, you have to choose the right product to be injected in the right place. This, for example, is a, a cohesivity. <clears throat> it means that if you separate the fingers with a cohesive uh, product, then it, it will stick. But then elasticity means that when you go back, the capability of the product is to stay in the same way as um, started. So cohesivity is very important for tissue integration, viscosity and elasticity for tissue support and malleability. And malleability is one of the, of the characteristics of, <clears throat> of plasticity of the product. 
Uh, Pixotropic technology, this is very interesting because, again, is one of the uh, things that have been more studied by bioscience. It means that if you have a product and you pass this product through, in, in, you, in, you pass this product through a needle, then when the product goes out from the, in, from the needle, it will have the same characteristic it had before passing through a needle. This is very interesting and important for stability, for the rate of reabsorption that becomes less, of course, and because it doesn't spread into the tissue. So spreading into the tissue is not a good thing in certain cases, but it's very nice in other ones. So we can say that the tixotropic um, tixotropy, tixotropy is fundamental in certain um, treatments uh, and is not in other. But having some products that are more tixotropic than others is fundamental to make the right choice. Um, bioscience products, we have face fillers and body fillers. So, uh, and we will stay on that, on that too. Oops, sorry. And we stay on that too. So monophasic. What we have in monophasic, uh, we have higher proof. That is low viscosity with high elasticity. It means that it can pass very easily through uh, a needle with no effort. So it's very soft and it's very good for a face. Uh, don't use in other part of the body because it's not useful. It's, what is fantastic for the face, but in other places it doesn't work. Is best for superficial to meet dermis. More su uh, superficial you are, and better it is with this product because it gives the better, the best when you're on the on the surface. Higher proof comes into uh, into different um, into different uh, products. One is called soft, that is monodensified, um, and the other one is balanced that is polydensified. And what changes one from the other is viscosity, because you can see here in yellow, viscosity uh, in, uh, in, in the soft is much lower than the viscosity in the balance. So imagine that because of the fact that viscosity is so important when you inject it into, for example, in, in, in the surface, because less viscosity means that it can spread so it is very good when you're really in the surfaces, and I'm talking about soft. With a balance, you can be deeper. In fact, superficial indications. Balance, deep. Then we have the products that are biphasics, and those are two products, because are the products of the line Iacorp and the products of the line Genefield. So medium to high viscosity, medium to high elasticity. Of course, the products are harder products, but are more resistant and more light. And the indications are for face and body and for deep dermal tissue injection. So those are the products of the line uh, higher core. If we make a comparison between the cross-linking uh, systems and the dimension particles, because you can see from here that, for example, okay, we can see that molecular weight is the same um, in, uh, in both of them. But if we look at the cross link of the thinking and the dimension of the particles, we can see that there is a huge difference, or at least there is a huge difference, for example, in cross linking between the lips and the face contouring. MLF1 and MLF2. Um, and if you look at the particles, you can clearly see that the dimension of the particles of the ironic acid is completely different. Because, for example, in leaves, it's 80, uh, and it goes up to 500 in MLF2. So the difference is really huge. And the reaction in tissue will be very, very different. Stabilization. Here again, have a look to the cross-linking to the stabilization, stabilizators. Okay, face, lip, lips, uh, higher corp one and two. Look at here. We, we pass from a 3.6 percentage to 18.4 percentage. It means that the products 
a very different one from the other, and they react differently. Genefia, um, again, is biphasic, medium high viscosity, high elasticity, is very close to higher cork, but is softer. And we will see why in a second. And indications again are face and body and deep dermis and soft tissue and soft tissue indication. If you make a comparison, because one of the questions can be why uh, different products for body contouring? Because apparently we have Hyacorp, uh, MLF1, MLF2 and Genethiel that can be uh, with the same indication that is body contouring. But if we look, for example, viscosity is more, it's the same, pH is the same. But particle size is different, it's completely different. So we go from uh, 500 down to 200 of Genethia Contour, it means that the, their rheology is totally different, or not totally, but it's, let's say it's partially different, but with very interesting differences. And the cross-linking, again, with MLF2 is much higher than in Genethia. Uh, the MLF2 is quite close to MLF1, but is different from Genefiel. The two products are two different products. When you have them in your fingers, and I encourage you to have the products in, in your fingers to taste it, you, can, you, you really can feel that the particles are different and the products are different. So, how to choose the right HA for body contouring? There are some parameters that are fundamental for the decision and are desired final results. So we have to define exactly which is the, <clears throat> the desire we, and the, 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 the goal we want to achieve, the result. We have to define the anatomical area. We have to, to define the tissue depth, so where we are injecting and the injection technique. Each of those are fundamental to make the right choice for the good product. Tissue is fundamental, it's fundamental relevance um, to, uh, to achieve a good result. We have to understand the depth, so where we are injecting, and the tissue quality. If we are injecting intradermally, we will make a certain choice. It means that the, the, the quality of viscosity and elasticity, they have to be really at the top because we want a product that has the capability, for example, to spread if we are really superficial. For example, when we inject intradermally or hyper-superficially in order to smooth superficial wrinkles. If we are subdermal, what we have to do is to use a product that, okay, is quite close to the product that we are using uh, more superficially, but it can be, of course, more stiff. It means that viscosity and elasticity can be higher than if we inject in the deeper surfaces or close to the fascia, the product that we have to use is a product that have a high, vis a high a viscosity and less uh, capability of uh, elasticity, for example, and we have a good elasticity because we want the product to support the, uh, the pressure. You can see my, um, uh, my arrow, the pressure of the tissue on the um, hyaluronic acid that we injected. Tissue quality it makes the difference again because in the same area, if we consider a young patient or an older one, we have different tissues with different pressures of the tissue on the hyaluronic acid that we injected. So we have to consider different products uh, on uh, different age, on different in different age. We have to consider, for example, the aging process with the movement and with the diminishing of the volumes of fat, of fat compartment inside the face in order to restore properly um, the youthful anatomy. And even in the body, there are very important differences, for example, in buttocks, because buttocks of young women 
it's very different from the Botox of an elder one and tissues that are not elastic need a different products and different technique compared to products that can be injected in more hard and stiff uh, uh, tissues of younger patients. So, for example, if we look at uh, this chart that is apparently a little complicated, but for me is fundamental, and let's see, for example, um, mid-phase. Okay, so our aim to, is to augment the volume and to augment the, pro the projection, and the technique is a subdermal or deep dermal injection, and the desirable properties of the chain is of a product with withstand shear deformation, it means that to resist to deformation and compression, but need to have a minimal displacement and maintain the shape. So the rheology property would be low viscosity injection in order to be able to inject it easily with a high elasticity and with uh, a, a minimal capability uh, of with a medium high cohesivity, with a medium high cohesivity. If we go, for example, in fine lines and in fine lines and lips, we want to volume uh, the volume of the vermilion and the definition and the definition, of course, so injection has been performed submucosal or intradermal. The desirable properties is easy molding and spread of the product, but not excessive uh, bulking. So the product has to be with a low viscosity, due to its injection, of course, with a low medium elasticity, with a low cohesivity. But then if we start to change, for example, lower phase is different because what we, we need is a medium elasticity, a medium cohesivity, because we want volume and projection. Think about nose and chin now. Volume and projection, medium viscosity, of course, high elasticity, high cohesivity. We don't want the product to spread. If we jump then on body contouring, on body volumes, for example, the aim is to achieve volume and projection. So subdermal or intra-adipose tissue injection, we don't want at all a product that spread. We want a maximal vertical projection. So we want a product with a mid-viscosity. Why? Because the cannula that we use to inject there, the product can be bigger. So we don't care so much about the viscosity. But we want a high elasticity and high cohesivity. Think about the Botox, for example, and about the pressure we, we give to Botox. We need a product with elasticity and with cohesivity. It means that when there is a pressure on the Botox, the product will, will not spread. This is different if we think, for example, about body skin relaxation, because we can use the same products, but the same philosophy, the same, the same, then we can use a chain, but the aim is less the volume, a little more the projection, but we want a product that spread with a good projection, but we want it to spread. So mid viscosity and mid elasticity and high cohesivity. Um, if we look about, if we are, so as far as we understood till now, the two parameters that are fundamental are viscosity and elasticity. And if we look, on the products that we have in our uh, portfolio, and we look at an, an ascending curve at the top of viscosity and elasticity, we have IACORP 2, then right under we have IACORP 1, we have genophil body that is definitely a little less, the contour, and, the, uh, and then slowly the soft touch, and then the soft touch is more comparable to the balance, and the soft feel is more comparable to the soft and the cardiac or clips. So it's a matter of decision according to the aim, to what we want to achieve, the result we want to achieve, to the anatomical area, and to the aging process of the patient where that we have facing, that, that faces us. Um, let's talk now about HA and body, uh, and body contouring. What I call is past, present, and future. Are we talk a little bit? 
about the past because I was involved in the past in studies in a product that I, uh, I loved a lot that was macro rig. It's not nice sometimes to talk during a webinar of, a, of an industry or another product, but I, I, I love it and I left a little part of my heart. So I will talk a little bit about that because I think that it was a, a very good product with good results and it was supported but good, with good scientific studies. But at a certain point, the industry decided to remove it from the market. And this was due not for the good results or the good scientific studies supporting it, but it crashed because many doctors were using the product in an inappropriate way. It means they used to take the macrolein and filling syringes and injecting the face with a product that was not produced and studied for the face. It was studied for body contouring, and that's it. So many of those doctors, they thought to have a cheap product that they, can, they could use it easily in the face, and they use it, and they, they were using uh, fat for the face. But your only case, it is not fat. And when you inject 20 cc's in the face, and if you inject a hyperviscous uh, product in the face, you will have disasters and not good results. And then it was, uh, they decided to take, to take out from the market because of an inappropriate use in the breast. So those were the reasons why the, the experience stopped, and that was a great pity because I think that for body contouring, HA has had uh, a present and have a great future. So it's fundamental to us, for us to stay on indications that is volume enhancing, shape remodeling, and laxity treatment for buttocks, arms, calves, hands, genitals, there is a question mark. Tissue, as we said, is relevant because sometimes an area requires different HA with different rheological characteristics. Look at, for example, this patient. In this patient, for example, for me, are indicated in the um, in this um, superior area, multiple small deep bolus, and in the inferior part, a subdermal fan technique in order to reduce the wrinkling that when she contracts the gluteus maximus, she has. So multiple deep modules of Iacorp 2, um, superiorly and laterally, and subdermal fan technique of Iacorp 1, inferiorly. Of course, in tissues like that, for example, it's easy to get a good result with a Iacorp 2 with a multiple small bolus technique, and the results you can achieve are very interesting and fantastic. But not all patients are like that. For example, here, uh, what we need is a double technique, so injecting more deeply with Hyacorp 2, and then subdermal fan technique with Hyacorp 1. And what, when I'm talking about bolus, I'm talking about really small ones, not big ones, really small ones, in order to um, have a smooth result. And the results are in very interesting, of course. When you have scars, what you need is subdermal fan technique, for example, with a genefi contour, because you're more superficial. So I prefer to use a genefi instead of a higher core, because I think that the result is better, and the, because we have to stay more, more superficial. And the results are, of course, interesting. And the same in this case, again, genetic contours, superficial, in order to get results like that. Um, again, this is the case of post liposuction sequelae. This is double technique, deeper and more superficial. And the result of the double technique. Cases like that are definitely more difficult, but the, 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 um, the, the difficult cases, the, the, the difficult treatment, um, the Poland syndrome is very difficult to treat, especially in patients that are so uh, so slim and thin, they don't have any fat for fat grafting, but for me anyway, in most cases, is the top procedure. And 
uh, implants are generally a failure because the skin is so thin and you have uh, no fascia at all, you have just the, the ribs. So what we can do is perform a multiple sessions of subdermal fan technique with the Genesis contour, for example, in order to get uh, a better result. And you can achieve it through multiple uh, sequences technique. And um, re relaxation of the tissues, again, for me, is genifia uh, is genifia contour because you need to spread the product under the dermis in order to have a, a good swelling of the tissues and uh, that reduce relax uh, relaxation. And here I'm using a spinal needle. If we talk about calves, we fight again tissues that are really stiff, really stiff. So uh, I prefer to use a higher cork too with small balls because for me it is uh, more resistant to, to pressure. With good results. Kidney genitals. Um, is different chapter, and we need some consideration about it. First of all, is it off label or is it in label? Because Genesis and Higher Corp are patent for body contouring. So the first question is: Is labia majora part of the body or genitals uh, are an internal part? The second one is anatomical considerations. And the other question is, which product, and I would add, how much product and how much quantity? Uh, some of you know that uh, genital is my focus, mainly main focus in my practice. So I love this area, and I did so many, uh, so many studies, uh, anatomical studies. So first question is, is it of label or not? So according to anatomy, uh, this is external genitalia. So according to anatomy, uh, we are out. So apparently we, we can use it, but uh, we, we can use the product. From the embryological point of view, of view we are talking about the um, ectodermal uh, origin and from ectodermal uh, origins the skin as well. So it means that we are out. So according from, to me, External genitalia can be treated with a product that is for body contouring, but uh, this is my opinion and is not an opinion, uh, is my opinion. So um, we have to ask to bioscience if they, if for, for them as well, uh, they agree to this vision, uh, to this vision or, or, or not. But according to embryology and uh, anatomy, uh, I, I think it, it's safe. The other consideration is about the, the anatomy. Uh, I've seen, I have to tell you, some, sometimes some disasters with ironic acid because we have to understand, first of all, that ironic acid is not fat, and you have to understand that this area is hyperreactive. If you see in, the, in this image of cadaver dissection, this is a labia majora. The labia majora is a, a fat bag that is surrounded by a fascia. You see that I'm grabbing the fascia and I'm moving it, uh, I'm moving it superiorly. And the fascia contains, and the fascia contains, um, contains fat. Um, what we can say is that we can inject uh, safely a uronic acid uh, subdermally, we can inject it even inside the labial sac, but we cannot go at the base of the sac. This is because the base of the sac is open and hyaluronic acid it might, it might migrate. This is the first uh, observation. The second one is regarding the uh, vascular case of vascularity. They are deep. It means that if we go deep, we can injure the vascular case, so we don't want it and we don't need it. So if we stay superficial, we are safe. What we have to consider anyway is that the tissue 
is hyper is hyper reactive is hyper reactive it means that when you inject the hyaluronic acid the reaction you have from tissues it is much different from the reaction that you can have injecting for example in the buttocks or injecting in the face or in the arm or somewhere else because when you inject the hyaluronic acid into the labia you will have anyway an edema that will last for a long time. That means that when you inject hyaluronic acid, you have, first of all, to make the choice of hyaluronic acid with uh, a, a good quality of elasticity, with a, a low viscosity, with uh, a small quantity to be injected, so never more than two cc's that are fair enough to achieve good results and can be injected easily subdermal. Don't use, don't use a product with uh, more important uh, characteristics, such as a higher corp uh, one, because it's, it's definitely too much, and use small, small quantities to achieve uh, good and stable, a good and stable results. What you want to get? Um, is a, an augmentation of the volume and enhancing the quality of the skin. Okay, after all that, I will share with you some of my thoughts about perspectives in the use of what we can call macromolecular HA, even the, if this terminology is a little old style, but it can be useful to define those products. I think that uh, those products have a bright future in body contouring if proper indications and good practice will be respected. I think that if all doctors using those products will stay on, on indications and uh, will have a proper knowledge of areology a proper knowledge of indication, a proper knowledge of techniques, we, we will have for the next years, many, many years, uh, one more arrow in our query. But we have to stay on that. We have to have really clear in our mind that each uh, HA has different capabilities of rheology. And even between each product that is indicated for body contouring, there, there are huge differences. So MLF1 is different from a character, characteristic of ML, MLF2, but is different from the characteristic of, um, uh, of Genefiel. So it's a matter of the decision, indication, and technique. When you inject the product with a fan technique, you will have a certain result. When you inject it with balls, you will have another one. And when you melange and you mix the techniques and sometimes the product, you can achieve even different results. So it's a matter of learning curve. So at the end of the story, I think we have a bright future. Uh, and I ended up my presentation. Thanks for the attention. And I'm here for all your questions. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, uh, now you can see that you have a small letterbox uh, on the right part of the screen uh, called uh, questions. So you can type there uh, all what you want to know about uh, the presentation. Uh, we will wait for the first question. Do you, do you guys have any questions? Because I've got one from... Um... Okay, let's see. Okay, we have a first question. Thank you. Thank you for your lecture, Doctor. Can you throw some light on possible complication of body contouring? That's a question uh, we just received from Richard. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I don't think that there is a technique that is perfect and has no complication rate. So every uh, single technique has uh, complication. I like very much, for example, fat growth. Uh, I was so proud to, to write one of the chapters of Sidney Coleman's book and I to tell you that even with Fatcraft we have complications. And with a product like HA, of course we can have complications and complications generally 
are related to um, a um, misunderstanding of the rheology of the product or to the amount of product that has be that have to be that has to be injected. So what I like to say is that complication may occur one because they can occur is like infections and what we can do to avoid infections are a proper disinfection and to perform it in uh, proper structures uh, taking care of um, all the possibility uh, uh, taking care of a good practice. Uh, what we can have is high inflammation, as with all uh, hyaluronic acids, so we have to be prepared to uh, treat some inflammations. And sometimes what I see in the past, and definitely less uh, in the recent times, for example, are lumps and bumps. Luckily, hyaluronic acid is, first of all, reabsorbable. Secondly, we can treat it properly with yearly days. For example, what what I saw sometimes are um, is injection of too much product resulting in lumps. So the lump can be treated with yearly days, can be treated with aspiration, for example, or just punching and squeezing and squeezing out the, the product. But the problem the, uh, the, the problem has to be treated by persons that they know exactly what they are doing. I use a lot uh, in the past, and even nowadays, for example, ecography in order to define exactly which is the problem. So the, uh, at, at the end, the answer to the question is that, of course, they might be complication, but complication rate is quite low if the problem, if the product is, um, is correctly implanted and the quantity is correct, and the indication is correct. Okay, thank you, Doctor. We have another question. Uh, is IACORP and Genifil uh, CE marked? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, in fact, I can add something uh, because I'm a member of uh, the marketing team for Bioscience. Uh, uh, IACORP and Genifil are uh, actually the, the only CE marked uh, urinic acid for body fit uh, uh, in, now in the world. Uh, we have another question from Kerry. Uh, it has, uh, Kerry is asking, how long does it last in the body? Uh, this is a very good question because it depends on the quantity of hyaluronic acid you inject and where you inject it. Um, because, of course, more the product you inject and longer the result, <clears throat> but you have limits. And the limitation is due to the good sense of injecting uh, not too much. So what I would say is that, for example, in uh, Batox, the results can stay up to four or six months, quite visible, and then slowly they go down, and then you need a, a retouch. I rather prefer to have patients coming back to me after four months to make a little refill instead of overfilling uh, and trying to have uh, patients that are more happy for six months but with a higher complication rate. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Um, another question after the presentation you did about uh, genitals. Um, there is a question from Hassan. Hassan is asking, how about male genitalia injection? Um, up to now, I don't perform it. I think that the, the, the anatomy of um, female, female anatomy and male anatomy are very, very different. The problem in male is that the uh, box and the albuginea are uh, one close to the other, but the space in between uh, is uh, a virtual space. It means that there are no connection between the two. So when you're in between the box and the albuginea, you're in the, uh, in the land of nobody. So it means that the product can squeeze here and there. There, are some there, there is one technique that allowed to be injected under the back, um, but I, I think is definitely um, tricky with question marks. So up to now, I don't recommend to use it in male genitals. I don't think that is, um, is appropriate right now and we're not 
group peer studies. There was I, I was involved in I was wondering actually the uh, the session at IMCAS about male genitals uh, on with hyaluronic acid. And there uh, was a very good uh, kind of a dissection, um, and but the, the oh, 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 we were all um, quite dubitative about the safety of the technique, um, about the safety of the technique. So even I, I think that if we will be able to go under the uh, box fascia and stay under a button, we will have a stiff place where to inject it. But it, it's almost impossible to be sure that we are in that plane. Okay, we have a lot of, uh, of questions about um, uh, the bot, uh, Botox uh, injections. We'll do a specific webinar for that, so we'll not answer the, the, this question right now, but uh, you have to know that we can use it uh, for, for, for Botox also. Uh, Anastasios is asking, how are you treating granul granulomas? Granulomas are quite rare, um, are quite rare. And I would say that um, generally when a lump occurs, uh, what happens is a sort of capsule or a round. And because the term of granuloma, it's quite, quite specific. So if, they, if we are talking about lump, I try to define first of all why, which is the cause of the lump. Under echography, you can see clearly if inside the lump, there is a residual of hyaluronic acid or there is not. If there is a residual of hyaluronic acid, I enter it with under echography inside the lump with hyaluronic acid, I inject, and I see what happens because sometimes everything disappears, even if there is a, a capsule. In other cases, what you see is that the, densi the density of the material changes, so I stay with the needle inside, I enter with a thin gauge needle inside the lump. If the lump is big enough to, ins to permit me to insert an 18 gauge, and if I see that the density changes, I aspirate, I wait two minutes, and then I aspirate. If inside the, um, the nodule, uh, or inside the nodule, there is no hyaluronic acid, so I really treat it as a granuloma. So I treat it with uh, um, with uh, with cortisone, uh, hyper diluted cortisone, as, as we treat a granuloma generally. But first of all, you have to make a diagnosis. What's it? What is? What's is inside? Finished. Okay. Um, uh, just uh, just uh, another question. Um, uh, about uh, there's a lot of question about the technique. Um, so what? Uh, Gloria, for example, she's asking, would you recommend bolus technique with cannula or with needle? As I as she used cannula in general for buttock augmentation, uh, would you recommend using need for certain boluses or stick to cannula throughout? No cannula, cannula forever. I okay. love cannulas. I, I use cannulas even for. Uh, for lips, for uh, fine wrinkles, I, I love cannulas. And in the bottles, of course, is cannulas, of course. Okay. Um, a, a couple of uh, answers about what the people want, because we have a lot of questions about uh, the duration of uh, the product in the in the body. Uh, the corporal fillers can last uh, around a, a year and a half or two also. It depends on the techniques and the quantity you're, quantity you're, you're injecting. Um, about the registration, because we are getting a lot of questions about CE mark uh, and all that stuff. I want you to know that uh, we will be uh, also registered in uh, probably Brazil, because we are getting a lot of questions about it, uh, in April, April 2020. So that's uh, something people was asking a lot. Uh, doctor, another question from Tanya. What do you think about PRP plus IR Corp MLF2 10 milliliters breast augmentation induction? What do you think about PRP and hyaluronic acid? Yes. <laughs> I think that uh, PRP and hyaluronic acid of certain hyaluronic acids 
can be mixed together in order to um, to achieve um, regeneration. But we are talking about something hyper specific. There are some publications that um, some publications uh, that were published, very good publications published quite recently. I'm talking about last year, but we were talking about genitals. About breast, I think that we are not uh, now ready to use again uh, uh, uronic acid for breast uh, because the problem with breast is breast imaging. I mean, Botox is Botox and arms are arms and genitals are genitals and uh, the, the problem that we can face at least are complications. Okay, if we talk about breast, we are talking about breast detection, about breast detection of cancer, so we cannot play. And according to my experience with uh, previous uh, materials, uh, and I'm talking about microlink, let's talk freely, I think that uh, the product was very good, but uh, it gives uh, a totally different image of the breast. And then the second question is about the inflammation of the tissue induced by uronic acid. So I think that we have to, st to be hyper safe. And so before using it in the breast, I think that we have a long, it will, it will take a long, long time. And it, we, it, so many studies have to be performed, first of all about detection and then about, about the safety and last the efficacy. So I discourage. Okay, thank, thank you very much, much doctor. Um, uh, just for you to know, because we got a lot of questions about it, we'll do a specific webinar for buttocks. We'll do a specific webinar with uh, about hands also. And uh, because I got a lot of questions about it, we will also talk uh, later in next episode about uh, the comparison with uh, fat grafting. Um, uh, did you use... Uh, okay, uh, the, the, the people is asking about the quantity uh, of uh, product you're using, uh, doctor, for buttocks, for example. Uh, do you have, uh, can you give us an idea of the quality of product you're using for different zones uh, of the body? Can you ask me again? Because I didn't understand properly all the question. What is, what is, for example, the usual amount of, of hyaluronic acid to put in the buttocks? Uh, and uh, and uh, what is the usual amount of hyaluronic acid you put in the hands? Uh, first of all, I use different products, and the quantity of products it depends on the quality of tissues and to the result and I want to I want to achieve, and of course to the pocket money of the patient because uh, each CC has a price, so we have to consider even this. I would say that in the botox. Uh, you can, in, uh, I inject mainly around 100 cc per, per side, but sometimes it can be much less if I had to stay just on one point in order to give just little projection, more projection. So even sometimes, even 20 cc's that are well, very well placed, they make the difference. Sometimes you have to spread the product, so you have to amplify the use of the, of, of the uric acid. About and again, what I said is that I really prefer to retreat the patients instead of adding too much volume in one time. The and about hands again, it depends, but I'm a very conservative in hands, and I think that even with five five cc's of the dorsum of the hands, we can achieve good results because what we we want to to get is mainly a sort of edema. So even 5cc is very well placed and with the product that's spread, uh, they can give a very good result. Okay, uh, we have another question from Osman. Uh, he's asking, do you, pres do you prescribe doctors steroids to prevent edema or inflammations? Uh, the studies that are published that are extra, extra clear, they say, for example, they state, for example, that if you give cortisone, uh, if you prescribe cortisone, cortisone is useful just if you start uh, endovenous injection two hours before. 
Otherwise, it doesn't work. What I can I can tell you my protocol, and my protocol is that before the treatment, um, five seven days before the treatment, I prescribe bromelin, huge quantities of bromelin. Uh, it means three or four pills per day of bromelin. Uh, that uh, is, I found that it is very very active on that. Plus, arnica. Arnica again, uh, six pills per day, five, seven days before, and then they continue with that for some days. And that, redu that reduces the inflammation, the, the, the inflammation rate. But I generally don't prescribe any steroid after the, the treatment. I don't like that. Okay, we got another question from Fadi, and we'll. I think we're gonna we're gonna go through a couple of more questions. If you're okay, doctor, uh, Fadi is asking: Have you ever faced any granuloma after buttocks injection, particularly with slim patients? The answer is yes. It's just a matter of numbers and patients. Um, more patient you treat more complication you see. When, when, I, when I talk with doctors and they say I never had one complication, I don't believe <laughs> because it's fantasy. Um, complication is just a matter of um, number of patients. And so more patients you treat, more complication you will see in your, in your life. And so the answer is yes, of course. I saw granulomas, I, I saw lumps. But on the other side, I saw many very, very good results. Otherwise, I won't be here to, to talk about, about results. Okay. Uh, I repeat to all the people who's asking about techniques for hands, for buttocks, or other uh, zone uh, in the body, we will have specific webinars uh, to answer all these questions. Um, uh, very, uh, very, uh, we have a lot of, of questions about uh, Latvia, Latvia Majora also. Um, for example, Catherine is asking, uh, when you inject female Latvia with HA, with hyaluronic acid, do you routinely use antibiotics or steroid to calm inflammation post-treatment? My personal view and my personal opinion is that I give prophylactic antibiotic to uh, all my patients that uh, are injected with more than five cc's of hyaluronic acid. And so all my patients, you know, my patients, I do a prophylactic uh, antibiotic therapy. <clears throat> so 10 minutes before, 15 minutes, half an hour before, I do an intramuscular injection of, um, um, of a cephalosporin. Um, and this for me is fair enough. And I have to tell you about that I never have seen in my uh, in my cases through the years. I'm not talking just about just I'm not talking about the experience just with the uh, bioscience products for body contouring. I'm talking about my previous experiences. I never have seen in my cases one infection. But I'm really careful about where I'm performing it about this infection and staying uh, safe. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I have my, uh, my guidelines. I, I'm, I'm a surgeon and probably my, mentally, I'm really strict about what I'm doing. I, I, I don't think that uh, injecting um, 20 cc of your acid is the same thing of injecting one cc. So we have to be more careful uh, and having more, um, strategic resources compared to a, a, a lower volume injection. Okay, we have a, a last question from Antonella. I guess Antonella is uh, uh, from the, the same country as you are, uh, doctor. Uh, she says, uh, is it possible to combine IACORP with AFJ and to inject together with Bafi technique to increase the volume of the buttock. She says she's using this technique when she needs to achieve the volume thanks to the IACORP and to improve the quality of the skins, thanks to the effect of the stem cells in one touch. What do you think about that, doctor? I don't like to mix. <clears throat> I think that um, I don't like to mix unless someone with a study demonstrates me that mixing uh, gives better results 
uh, with the same complication rate. I hate complications. I really hate complications. And mixing, mixing and combining products um, is one of the things that I never, I never like. But this is one of my attitudes. Um, Maybe she, she she's right, but again, the studies are needed to to prove that the efficacy is better and the complication rate is at least the same. Okay, and last question from Claude, because we got a lot of questions about the, the, the techniques of anesthesia. Uh, Claude is asking, uh, Claude is from France, and he's asking, he, says, uh, he has often this question uh, from uh, his uh, his doctors. Uh, before injecting IACORP, what do you do? Anesthesia on the point of injection or hydro dissection with serum and xyloadrenaline? Thank you very much for that. Yeah, very good question because in the scientific board we have very nice discussion about that. Right? Because, for example, Piero Carbai that has a huge ex uh, experience in that. He doesn't like at all uh, of injecting uh, anesthetic where he's injecting the, um, <laughs> the product. And me, for example, what I do since ever, I inject the um, with the, the point of introdu introduction of the cannula with uh, uh, anesthetic with adrenaline one on fifty thousand because I don't want bleeding, even not in the entry point. And then. I enter with a spinal needle, long spinal needle, and I inject a solution that is more or less like a Klein solution, but small quantities, really small quantities. And then I wait two or five minutes and uh, I make a few, few words with the patient and then I inject. I hate so much uh, the, the pain before um, and, and during and after the procedure. But on the other side, I've seen so many, uh, so many treatments done by uh, very good uh, doctors without anesthesia. But maybe this is just my um, my attitude. But I, I won't change it. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's wrong not to inject anesthetic. I'm just saying that I I always like it like that. I try to to avoid pain and discomfort as much as I can. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, we'll have uh, more questions for the next webinars. People is asking already when is going to be the, the, the next episode. We will uh, let you know very, very soon. It's going to be, uh, I guess, uh, within the next uh, two weeks. Uh, so thank you very much for your uh, participation, for your atten for atten attendance, all of you guys. Uh, Doctor, thank you very much. We will be pleased to answer the question in the next webinars and um, see you in the next episode of the Aesthetics Code by Bioscience. Thank you all very, very, very much. Bye. Bye.